Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? How you doing? You know who this is. The Chosen One, Gabriel Skywalker from the DFS Club and Schroeder Skywalker, my co-host from the DFS Club. He says, hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Welcome, guys, to a MLB main slate video. It is a 15-gamer, so Schroeder and I knew we had to come on and do a video, right? In the middle of, of uh, researching uh, uh, UFC, I'll do a UFC video for tomorrow. We got a 15-fight card. My man Nate Manus is on the card, so let's go, guys. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button, hit that pause up button, smash that bell icon so you know when Schroeder and I drop our videos, and leave us a comment down below. We love hearing from you guys, right, Schroeder? He just woke up, so you have to excuse why he's so quiet, but this is the real star of the show. If I film one without him, everyone says, hey, where's Schroeder? And I get it. I get it. Right? How can how can you how can you not love this face? Right? All right, Schroeder, are you ready to go into warp speed? Let's get ready. Let's start the show. All right. So Schroeder and I are really excited because we had the NFL, another great NFL game tonight. Um Provided four lineups for the club for Fandle. Every single one of them cashed really nicely. That's right, Shorter said. It, it was all my picks, guys. Um, and hopefully my NFL showdown video helped you guys. Um, pretty much went the way we thought it would go. Um, so, yeah, no big surprises. But, uh, yeah, guys, let's get into it. It's a 15-gamer, so let's just get straight into it. But before we do, let's do the breakdown. So we're going to go game by game. The night before doesn't look like any weather concerns. So we got the Colorado Rockies. You guys see Schroeder there? Almost. All right, there it is. There he is. Okay, we'll, we'll try this. Colorado Rockies versus the Washington Nationals. Humid, partly cloudy. Winds are blowing in at five miles an hour. Vegas does not have an implied run total yet, but we got Jermaine Marquez at 8-8 versus Josiah Gray at 8-2. Then we got Cleveland at the Yankees. Winds blowing in at 8 miles an hour. 3.9 for Cleveland. 5.2 for the Yankees. We got Zach Plezak at 8.4 versus Corey Kluber at 9K. Really, you're going to yawn during the video? This is a show, Schroeder. Are, am I putting you to sleep? Is, is, is that what's going on? Am I putting you to sleep? Yeah, he, see, he literally just woke up. I think he was in a, a deep sleep, too, poor guy. Hey, but we got to work. We got to work. Next up, we got the Twins at the Blue Jays. Twins, four implied total. Blue Jays, 5.6. They'll be in the dome. We got Michael Pineda at 5.6 versus Henry Zhu at 8.6. Then we got Baltimore at Boston, overcast. Winds blowing in at six miles an hour. No implied total yet from Vegas. We got Keegan Aiken at 5.1K, and we don't know who's going to pitch for Boston yet. Probably a bullpen game. I mean, who knows, right? Right. And then we got Pittsburgh at Miami. They'll be in the Dome. Pitcher-friendly park. We got Pittsburgh at 3.6. Miami, 4.5. We got Will Sam Crow at 6.2 going up versus Elinor. Elinor. I, Ebenezer Scrooge, okay? I don't know. Hernandez at 6.8K. Then we got the Dodgers at the Reds. Wind's blowing in at three miles an hour. Walker Bueller at 10-2 versus Louis Castillo at 8-8. Eight, eight. Then we got the roof closed in Tampa, guys. No implied total yet. Tampa, Detroit at Tampa. We got Casey Mize at 5-8 versus Louis Patino at 8-4. Then we got the Red Hot Phillies against the New York Mets. Winds are blowing in at eight miles an hour. Playing in New York. 4.1 implied total for the Phillies, 3.5 for the Mets. We got Zach Wheeler at 10-6 against Temenjalin Walker at 8K. And winds are blowing in at 8 miles an hour. Then we got the Chicago White Sox at the Texas Rangers. Five implied total for the White Sox, 3.6 for the Rangers. Uh, they always close the dome. It's going to be hot, but we'll see. If they keep it open, it should be live for hitting, but Another one of those, you know, pitcher-friendly ballparks. Most domes, you know, seems like are. Uh, Dylan Cease at 9-1 versus Taylor Hearn at 5K. Looks like a good uh, game for Chicago there. Then we got the Cubbies at Milwaukee. 
Another one, man. Winds are gusting out to right field. 72 degrees, mostly cloudy. If the roof is open here, I mean, this would be the game to stack, I would think. You got Zach Davies at 6K going up versus Adrian Hauser at 7-1. But we'll see if the roof is open or closed there. We got Seattle Mariners. I almost said Seahawks. At the Kansas City Royals, 4.6 for Seattle, 4.5 for the Royals. Eight mile an hour winds blowing directly in from center. We got Chris Flexen against Brady Singer. Then we got Arizona at Houston, red hot Houston right now. Um, 3.7 for Arizona, 5.6 for Houston. Madison Bumgarner at 8 4 versus Brandon Bielak Bielak at 5K. Then we got San Diego at St. Louis, guys. Winds are blowing in. Seems like all the winds are blowing in today on this slate. San Diego, 4.3. 4.8 for the Cardinals. We got Vince Velasquez at 6.9 against Miles Mikolas. God, pitching is horrible this slate. Is it just me? Uh, next up, we got the A's at the Angels. Winds blowing out at 6 miles an hour. Clear 68 degrees here on the West Coast. Vegas does not have an implied total yet. You got to come back up shorter if you got a bite to eat there. Um, but, yeah, Cole Irving, I think, is in a pretty good spot. Then last but definitely not least, we got the Braves at the Giants. Winds are blowing out to left field at 10 miles an hour. Clear, 56 degrees. Yes, the winds have been gusting here in the Bay Area. We got Ian Anderson at 8-5 versus Logan Webb at 9-8. Ian Anderson is supposed to pitch today, but the game got canceled. So that's it for the game-by-game -game breakdown. The day before doesn't look like any weather concerns, so that's always a good thing not to worry about. So, yeah, guys, big game. I'm um, big game, big slate, but that's why we're doing the video, guys. Guys, if you want to join the DFS club, you already know what it is. Just in time for the weekend, it's payday, but it's not like it's going to cost you much. We're the cheapest in the industry, guys. All you got to do is go to DFS club. Dot com. We are the cheapest in the industry, guys. At $14.99 a month, you get every single sport known to man and feline kind over here. We got DFS space, my brother from another mother, myself. You get everything, like I said, guys. All you got to do is click join now. Come hang out with Schroeder and myself and the rest of the family, guys. Click on my logo, Skywalker DFS. And, again, we got the monthly, the six-month, and the year plans. Um, and our three-day passes, which are kind of, which are really popular, um, you get the members-only podcast one hour before lock. Well, I'll be doing one for MLB tomorrow. Um, and for NFL, Sunday morning, I get my ass up at 8 a.m., and I love doing it because it's football, right? Uh, I'm looking to just go. I'm looking to go undefeated this year for NFL. You want lineups, ownership, projections, stacking, top stacks, you name it, the tools, I got you guys. DFSclub.com. Come join us for some UFC, too. If you guys have never played UFC DFS, come play with us, man. Once you have a lineup in and you got money in the game, it's and you've never even watched a UFC card, it makes it so much more fun. So just like any other sport, guys, when you got a lineup in there, it's much more fun. So come check us out, guys, DFSclub.com. If you have any questions, hit me up on my email. SkywalkerDFS at gmail.com. Okay, so let's bring it up. And, yeah, I'm going to warn you guys, pitching is god-awful here. Shout-out to Draft Dashboard, by the way. If you want to try this tool out, we have NFL, NBA, MLB, and NHL. It's only a dollar for 30 days. That's it, a dollar. Click on the link in the description below. You yourself will have Draft Dashboard, guys, just in time for the NFL season. So let's go to... Position optimizer. All right. So, yeah, 15 gamer. No early slate. So, no early slate video. Um, so, top of the stack here, we got Zach Wheeler at 10 6, $100 more on Fandle. Going up against the Mets, where he's done very well in his last two. Other than those last two, not so well. But 50, 50 DK points in his last start, 32 before that. I'll be paying up for Zach Wheeler. It seems like these days it's not worth paying up for pitcher because um, the teams that are in the running for the playoffs are, are already going to make the playoffs. They, you know, they'll throw them out there for like five innings and let them rest. But I don't see it here with Wheeler, man. I think he might go out there and pitch another seven innings, but we'll see. 
286 ERA with 225 strikeouts on the year. By far, I think the best pay up on the slate because next you got Walker Bueller at 10 2. Again, is it going to be like if Walker Bueller's pitching good, are they going to pull him after the fifth? You know what I'm saying? So for Fandle, we get that bonus for the six innings pitched. And if they pull him in the fifth, we're kind of screwed that way. I'm more willing to go Zach Wheeler. I mean, shoot, if, let me get comfortable here, guys. Sorry. Um, I need to get back in my chair and with the green screen, you know, it's more comfortable, but I just got to move a lot of shit around. Um, Walker Bueller, if you can fit both these guys in there, that's great. Um, Cincinnati's not been too hot lately, so it could be a good spot. Um, he's done okay against them 19, 21, 32 is good, and then a 23. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with Walker Bueller. When's the last time he's ever been lit up? Knock on wood. ERA 232, 189 strikeouts. So Wheeler has a lot more than he does. Uh, you got Logan Webb against Atlanta at home, 9.8K. Logan Webb's been lights out lately, man. Very consistent. 15, 20, 31, 28, 22. Against Atlanta, I don't fear it because he's dominated them. 28 and 27 DK points in his last two. He's pitched six, seven, and seven. So Logan Webb at 9.8. Definitely worth a look if you want to be different. Um, especially if you want to be different from Bueller and Wheeler, you can go Logan Webb. Or you can go Wheeler, Webb, Bueller, Webb. You guys know where I'm getting here. It's a big slate, so you know there's going to be value. So, you know, I always recommend to pay up for pitcher, but this time of year, guys, I don't know, man. Pitching today was, oh, my God, right? We got Adrian Hauser, who I like, at 7.1K against the Cubbies. 24-42 in his last two. So Hauser's been dealing, man. Six innings, nine innings in his last two. Brought his ERA down to 3.25. He's got 98 strikeouts on the year, guys. Um, let's see. Against the Cubbies, just a really safe play, right? 10, 11, 11, 7, 10 in his last five against the Cubbies. So last two games, though, has been phenomenal. 24, 42. So I think you're getting a really good discount here on Hauser on DraftKings. FanDuel, you're going to pay up a little bit. He's $1,300 more over there. But definitely a good spot. If the dome is closed and the winds aren't blowing out, it's even a better spot for Hauser. Uh, Brady Singer. Why is he only 5.3K? I don't know. It's a good DraftKings play. Um, he doesn't normally pitch past five innings unless he's having a really good game. But for 5.3K here, guys, he's going against Seattle. He got 17 DK points last time against him. He's had double-digit fantasy points four of his last five games. DraftKings really effed up here, guys. Really effed up here. 7, 29, 17, 15, 18 DK points. Fandle knows what's up. Fandle, he's 2,700 more over there. That's still pretty good. So I really like Brady Singer tomorrow against Seattle, especially for only 5-3. I mean, my goodness. He's probably going to be 100% owned. We can't be the only one seeing this. Even Cole Irvin's in play against the Angels. 6.6K. He pitched seven innings his last game. I played him. Got 24 DK points. Um... ERA is kind of high at 404, but his strikeouts are also high. He's got 109 strikeouts on the year, and he's going up against the Angels. In his last two against the Angels, 21 and 21 DK points. They've got to win. They know they got to win. So Cole Irving at 6'6". Love it. I think he's way too cheap. So plenty of value at pitching and plenty, like, you know, my favorite mid-tiers, Hauser. I even say that's that's value, too, at 7'1". And then you got the studs, the top three are always in play. Maybe pair one of these studs up with um, Singer. I mean, it's never a good idea to go 100% as, as confident as you are in a pitcher. You go 100% on a pitcher and they go out there and screw the pooch, you're in trouble. So I would get like 90% of Brady Singer at 5-3. That's a big, big, big error there. So let's look, go into some bats. We got Brandon, get out the belt at 5.2K. But nothing but phenomenal, guys. Going up against Anderson, he's one for two. OPS versus righties, though, is 1.031, which is great. Brandon Belt, get him in there. The surging Giants, man, no one's stopping him. Um, Paul Goldschmidt has been off the chain lately, guys. 
Don't know who he's facing yet, but at 4.2K, that's right, 4.2K, now he's priced up on FanDuel, where he should be. DraftKings has really dropped the ball on some of these prices today. 28, 13, 28, 2, and 9. He has yet to get a goose egg in his last five. Love me some Paul Goldschmidt tomorrow. I don't care who the pitcher is. Um, that's just crazy. 4-2, where he was just like 5-5. Five, five. Uh, Bobby Dahlbeck at 3-3. Three, three. Sign me up against Aiken where he's 2-4, for four, but it's a lefty. These Boston guys that hit lefties well, I love playing them because they're so cheap. Bobby Dahlbeck's only 3-3. Three, three. OPS versus lefties is 9.55. Really like that. And Daniel Vogelbach, if you're going to do a, a Milwaukee stack, could be sneaky, sneaky. He's only 2.5K. Um, he's all or nothing. You already know that. He's faced Davies twice, but one time out of those two, he got a home run. So I do like those odds. 7.58 OPS versus righties. Daniel Vogelbach. Get him in there. Let's go to second base. Josh Harrison leading off for Oakland at 4-8. I don't mind it, especially the way he's been playing lately. 22, 16, 11 in his last three. Yeah, double-digit fantasy points in his last three. He's not going up against – is he going up? Yeah, he's going up against Lynch, two for two. Let me double-check that. Sometimes, sometimes, not often, but sometimes – Draft dashboard is ahead of itself. We don't know if Lynch is going to pitch tomorrow, but draft dashboard thinks so. And if that's the case, he's, he's perfect against them. And Adam, down goes Frazier. Speaking of down goes Frazier, Smoke and Joe, our new puppy, German Shepherd puppy, will be here September, I think it's the 21st. I think it's the 20th. Next weekend. Next weekend. So I will be off of YouTube probably for three days. Because I'm going to have house guests over that are personally going to deliver Smoke and Joe. Um, so, yeah. Not till next weekend, though. So, we've got plenty plenty of videos to go. 12 for 32 against Mikolas. 375 batting average. And that's 32 plate appearances. I do like that. He's only 3.2K. Six singles, four doubles, two triples. Adam Fraser is not a power hitter by any means. He's only got four home runs on the year. But he is batting 308, so the average is still over 300. Four jacks. I like me some Adam Frazier at 3.2. Then Whit Merrifield, as long as he's still 4-4, I'm always going to play him, guys. The upside is just way up there. Going up against Flexton, he's never faced him. But Whit Merrifield leading off at 4-4 can always do some big damage. We got DJ the Mayhew at only 3.9K. He got a home run the other day. I do like that. He's two for six against Plezak, and he does have a home run against him. So, especially if you're doing a Yankee stack, kind of think you got to put DJ LeMahieu in here since he is the leadoff hitter. Um, but, yeah, since the fact he's already gotten one off him, I don't mind it there. Uh, Tommy LaStala actually didn't play it. didn't start, but he came in and pinch hit and still got me five DK points because I was out in the middle of nowhere, had no signal, so I couldn't even check my scores, nothing. But I had Tommy LaStyle starting, and come to find out he didn't start, but he came in and pinched hit and got me five fantasy points. This dude is just on fire right now. Absolutely on fire. Um, OPS versus righties is what really, I really like. 800 as opposed to 677 versus lefty. So Tommy LaStyle for the Giants. Normally leads off. Get him in there. I'm sure he's going to play since he took today off. Let's go to third base. Alex Bregman's too cheap, guys. He's back to his normal self. Houston is on fire. He's only 4.4K. Two for nine against Bumgarner, but lefties, his OPS is lovely. 958. And again, the old Alex Bregman is back. So get him in there. Um, Yo Moncada, White Sox, some of these guys are way too cheap. He's one of them. He's only 4K. Um, facing Hearn. Why not, man? White Sox stack might be popular again. We will see. They haven't really delivered lately, but it's just so tempting. It's like because they're just so freaking cheap, man. Let's go to shortstop because we won't stop, and we can't stop. All right, I'll never do that again. Uh, Fernando Tatis at 5'7". Came through for us today. 21-18 in his last two. Against Mikolas, he's one for three, but Mikolas is a righty, and we already know. 
play Fernando Tatis against righties. So he's under 6K, which is, you know, he could be 6'5", is what he's normally been. So I do like that. I do like Xander Bogarts, especially at 4'8". He's been 5K all year. And I love the matchup. It's against a lefty. We all know he does better against lefties, but that OPS is starting to even out, lefties and righties. But he's 2 for 4 against Clay Aiken, so batting 500. I don't mind it. I love the price tag of 4-8. Boston's going to wake up, and hopefully they do at home. They might. They could be a sneaky stack at home tomorrow, guys. Uh, Carlos Correa, another one of these Houston Astros. You got to get in there, man. You got to pick and choose your battles here. He's back to his old self again. Took, took him long enough, but... He's only 4-7. You can get him in there. Uh, let's see here. Jose Iglesias from Boston, 3.4K. You guys remember that other video the other day when I told you to play him? Got 19 fantasy points. He's still only 3.4K. He's one for two against Aiken, but with one home run. All right, so I love Jose Iglesias at 3-4. One of the most underrated players in MLB, in, in my personal opinion, when it comes to DFS. He always seems to come through, man. He doesn't dud on you. And Elvis Anders, man, he... This is where the veteran part in him comes in. He's only 3.2K, but he's been lit lately in his last three. 11, 22, 12. He knows it's put up or shut up. He knows Oakland wants to make the postseason. That's why they got the vet, man, and he's going to lead the way. 3.2K, even though he bats ninth or eighth, I don't mind it, guys. At least you, if it's, people do Oakland stacks, you'll probably be different from the rest of the field if you get Elvis in there. Uh, next up for the Yankee stack, we got Gabby Torres at 3-4. That's a little too cheap, in my opinion, where he's one for two against Plezak with a home run. That's a 500 average, guys. So at 3-4, I don't mind me some Gabby Torres. And let's go to outfield, where all the power is. Don't you dare be sour. Bryce Harper, what do I keep telling you guys? How can you not play this man every slate? 38 DK points today. 17 before that, 11 before that. I can go on and on and on. For his price tag, he just never disappoints. Doesn't do it. Um, going up against Walker, he hasn't done well, but he's done 12 at-bats. He does have a home run off him. And he's been crushing righties this year. 1.051 OPS. Bryce Harper worth every 6-1. What's a good word I can use there? That would make sense. It wouldn't. I sound like fucking Biden again. Uh, let's see here. Brian Reynolds, I kind of like as a one-off. Now, he's expensive. He's 4-9 on DraftKings. I love the FanDuel price. He's 3-4 for four against Hernandez, guys. 3-4 for four with two home runs. So this is one of these one-off, probably low-owned players that you can probably get, especially on FanDuel. Um, DraftKings, I might pause, hit the pause button, because that's, that's pretty expensive, especially for a guy on Pittsburgh. But, yeah, Brian Reynolds is definitely in play. Jordan Alvarez is under 5K. He's 4'9", but I like the fact that he's facing a lefty. It is Bumgarner who's looked like shit lately. OPS versus lefties, 1.162. So, yeah, give me some Jordan Alvarez, especially if you're going to do a Houston stack and you're getting a deal. George Jerry Springer at 4.9K has been nothing but phenomenal against Pineda, guys. 10 for 22 lifetime batting, 455. Four singles, three doubles, three home runs. So I do like that for George Springer at 4-9, guys. Luis Robert is 4-7. They're starting to jack his price up a little bit, but not to a point where I'm afraid to use him. I like him more when he's leading off. Schroeder, you going back to sleep over there? Yeah, he's probably tired, guys. Um. But, yeah, he crushes lefties. So, if he's going to lead off, I probably like him more at 4-7. But if he's going to bat like fifth, I might pump the brakes there. Fandle, he's priced up. So, don't even – don't Fandle, don't fuck with it. Uh, J.D. Martinez is kind of cheap. He's only 4-6. We know he's got upside, right? It is J.D. Martinez. I'm kind of liking a little Boston stack tomorrow. He's one for three against Clay Aiken with a home run. So, I do like that. And Boston's kind of cheap. Uh, but they've earned it, right? It's not like they've been uh, breaking any slates. Next up, we got Stanton at 4-6. Part of a Yankee stack, too. You guys know they're going to be popular again. Crushes righties. 4-6 is kind of cheap. Just saying. $700 cheaper on Vandal. But Vandal, he's a premium. DraftKings, 
you damn messed up with pricing on this slate. So love them. Get them in there. Hunter Renfro, part of this Boston stack. I really like it. 4-2. Lefties, yes. OPS versus lefties, 863. Get them in there, guys. My man, Hunter Renfro. And then Jake Myers for Houston. Pick and choose your Houston guys wisely. 3.2K. You don't have to break the bank to stack Houston. He's OPS versus lefties is 964. And he's had a couple good games lately, 16 and 19 DK points. So Jake Myers at 3-2. Get him in there, guys. And then Abdul Herrera, I'm going to keep telling you guys about he got 20 DK points today. FanDuel dropped the ball in his price again. He's $2,200 cheaper over on FanDuel. Vandal, I think he's a must play. I don't know how you don't play him. Leadoff hitter for Philly um, against Tmendulin Walker. That's what I call him. It's Tmendulin, Texas Ranger, Walker, whatever. But, yeah, he does do better against righties. If you want to play him on DK, I mean, yeah, that's cool. You're not getting a value, but on Vandal, you're getting a huge value. Don't forget about him over there. Um, let's see. Joey Gallo on a Yankee stack. If you want to be different, he's always one of the lower owned guys. He's all or nothing. He's only got a 200 batting average, but he has 35 home runs. So with him, you're either get, hoping for a home run or you know he's going to get you a goose egg. So it's high risk, low reward, <laughs> high risk, high reward, but his, his floor is like a zero. So don't mind it. 4.2K on DK, part of a Yankee stack. I can dig that. And my man, Lane Thomas, is always an autoplay at 3-4. Leading off for Washington. Dude, just phenomenal this year, man. This kid is going to be someone to look out in the future. He's only dudded one game out of his last five. So at 3-4, leadoff hitter for Washington. Washington stack may be in play. I'm going to have to look into it deeper tomorrow for the club, guys. And Austin Hayes is only 2-9. 2-9 for Austin Hayes. Against Montgomery. His OPS versus lefties is 8-0-4. Really digging that, but 2.9K, really? He's gotten 5, 30, 4, 7, and 30 in his last five. Don't mind it, guys. I mean, freaking Montgomery ain't Nolan Ryan or no one like that, so that's just too damn cheap, guys. Take advantage. And then Corey Dickerson's been ass cheeks lately, right? Total ass cheeks, but he's only 2.7 now. 2.7. And versus Panita. He's 8 for 17, batting 471 lifetime with two home runs, four singles, two doubles. So Corey Dickerson could be sneaky, sneaky at 2 7. That's the beautiful thing about these big slates is lots of value. Lots of value. Hell, I might leave some money on the table on this one. Brendan Marsh is not a bad one off at 2 4. He's been doing pretty good lately. And against Irvin, he's 500, three singles, nothing to write home about, but 2 4 is kind of cheap. And that's it. That's going to do it for the picks. But you guys already know what time it is. It's time for your favorite part of the video and mine, but I'm going to have to walk over there and get him now because he, he he fled the coop. It's time for none other than Schroeder's picks. Schroeder's going to give us his three home run calls. His first two is going to be who's going to get us one home run. His Third call is going to be who's going to get us two. Let me go, go go grab this little rascal. Come on, Schroeder. It's time, buddy. All right. There's a cat right here. He's like, man, I just want to go to bed. It's Friday. I partied too hard last night. All right, Schroeder. So looking at the at the player pool here, which just fell out of my wallet. Um who do you got as your first home run call? Who do you got? Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about, too. All right. That's a good start. Showed us first home run call of the night is none other. Really? All right. I can dig it. Showed us first home run call is Bregman. Alex Bregman. Cool, dude. All right, Schroeder. Who's your second home run call? Who do you got us getting the second home run of the slate? Who do you got? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Schroeder's second home run call is none other than Bobby Dahlback. 
All right, so you're putting your little raisins out there, man. You're letting them all out. So I love the gutsy calls. Here's where we really need you, Schroeder. Who's going to break the freaking slate and get us two home runs? Not one. Who's going to get us two home runs and break the freaking slate? Who do you got? Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. That one's kind of, I like the odds on that one. But, hey, you gave us two tough ones, so we'll take it. So there's two home run call that's going to break the slate. is none other than Bryce Harper. So that's it, guys. That's it for the video. Thank you so much. Right at 30 minutes. I apologize for it taking so long, but I'm trying to put on a show and try and get you guys the best picks. Don't forget, guys, come join Schroeder and I. He wants to go to bed so bad, but come join us, dfsclub.com. We have the best community, the friendliest community. No drama in here, and uh, we're winning, guys. That's why. We're playing everything from tennis to NFL dfsclub.com and draft dashboard shout out to them the sponsor of the video is only one dollar for 30 days shorter let's say a prayer because we got some research to do for ufc and let's get up out of here huh hopefully when everybody wins some money tomorrow on mlb god bless you god bless your families god bless your pets thank you god for another day on planet earth and we're praying for one of our members. His wife is in the hospital in ICU with COVID-19. I know she's going to pull through, God, but can you make it even a speedy recovery for her? You know who it is, DFS fam, DFS club family. So we're all praying for her, and uh, she'll be all right. All right, Schroeder, so what do we say? Let's get this bread. Don't take shit from nobody. My voice is about to go out. Schroeder and I are out. See you guys in the next one. Take care.